Education is vital. It enriches our lives, sustains our communities, and helps us grow into the future. At least, that's the idea. Truth is, education as we know it is failing millions around the world. Take Tando, for example. He's a bright kid with big dreams, but the education he's getting is holding him back. You see, Tando's school can't afford the latest learning materials. So he has to work with textbooks that are completely outdated. To make matters worse, Tano's teacher is also left using outdated information, often without even realizing it. And even if he manages to overcome this and gets into college, the cost of all the lessons, books, and notes he needs will land Tando in a pile of debt. It's not just Tando. This situation is being replayed in schools and colleges all around the world. So 
much for education for all. So how can we fix things? The answer lies in open education. Open education is a global movement that aims to bring quality education to teachers and students everywhere. The basic idea is to put top-notch learning materials on the web that anyone can access for free. You see, unlike textbooks, open ed resources can always be revised, so they're never out of date. Teachers are given free license to adapt them and improve them, giving students exactly what they need to achieve their dreams. As all open ed resources are free to share, schools are no longer limited by where they are or how much money they have. And if you think open education doesn't make the grade, think again. Open ed resources are being created by the world's most respected institutions and scholars. And the Obama administration is set to invest up to $2 billion in open ed in the next four years alone. From the highest branches of government right down to grassroots level, open education is changing lives. Visit creativecommons.org forward slash education to learn more. Well, they did with Obama. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's just to give you uh, an overview. Okay, so, um, and I'm sorry, I meant to kind of introduce us a little bit. I'm Debbie, I teach at Spring Branch Middle School. And this is Mindy, and Mindy, I'm sorry, where do you teach? I'm here at Alma Heights High School. Yes, and English. And this is Blakely. Hi, I um, teach at Swiss Valley, and I'll be moving over to Sagina ISD because I just got a job at the library. So. <laughs> and we are all in library school, and so we were doing a presentation, um, and so we've been working together on this. I'm sorry, I'm going a little bit backwards here. All right, so they gave a, a little bit of an intro to what that is. Written on your document right here is a definition of open educational resources. They're teaching, learning, and research resources that reside in the public domain or have been released under an intellectual property license that prevents their free use and repurposing. OER includes full courses, course materials, modules, textbooks, streaming videos, and, and so forth. Something that's important to remember about OERs is it's not just that they're free, it's how you can use them and reuse them. That's the important part. Uh, well, the free is nice, too. Um, there are different types of licenses, and we are introducing this to you as a person who's looking for other people's materials. You, though, can feel free when you are making something and want to share it. It is very, very easy to get a license. It's a couple of clicks on the computer to get a license. Um, but, but we're going to actually show you how you can tell if a resource is an OER. So I've... Just done a couple of screenshots. I found a couple of examples. This is a website called Merlo, like the wine. Merlo. And all I did is I went to the very bottom of that website, and this is what you will see. It'll have these little symbols, just like you saw in the video. But on Wikipedia, which is also an OER, when I went to the bottom of it, it actually doesn't have the symbols. Usually they will have the symbols, but not always. So I want to show you an example of both of them. But this one will clearly say down here in the very, very fine print, text is available under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike License. And then you can click on that. It tells you exactly what you're allowed to do with that. Okay, so very quickly, let me go through the licenses. Um, there are six different kinds. And I'm not going to read the whole thing because you have the document right in front of you. But this one, number one, is what we call the least restrictive. And basically, if it has this symbol on there, you can use it for anything. Commercial, non-commercial, internationally, for whatever you're doing, you can use that symbol, you can use that material as long as you give credit to the creator. So when you see that word DY, that's actually a word. It's not an acronym. It literally means this thing was created by, and then you're just telling who made it. So this website was created by Debbie Seguin, um, and that's what that symbol means. And then as you go down the symbols, you'll see
see they kind of add restrictions, but the restrictions are still pretty, pretty open. Um, so they, they just have different symbols that will tell you all the different ways that you can like it, uh, use them. Sometimes you can use them only non-commercially. Sometimes you can use them uh, and you can't make any changes on them. Sometimes you can use them and make any changes and share them with anybody and make money off of it. So that's what these different licenses are for. Okay, and then Nan, Mindy is going to go through um, the different parameters for using them. Okay, thanks. Um, this is pretty quick. I'll tell you that they use the acronym, the five R permissions for OERs, and um, those five R's, they, this used to be on one page yesterday, I promise, I'm sorry. Retain means go and find, go and search the Creative Commons for what you're looking for. Retain the resource that you want. Then you can reuse it. If it has a Creative Commons license on it, you get to reuse it um, openly as often as you want. Um, in any way that you want. You can put it on your website, you can make photocopies, whatever you want to do with it. Revising and remixing then is where you can um, adapt it, you can modify it, you can translate the work, you can do anything that you need to do to it. Because I know there are very few teachers who go and copy something off the internet and just make a photocopy and run it as is, right? Not, not that any of us are control freaks, but it needs to be in our font and it needs to be written exactly the way we want it to be, right? And so the great thing about Creative Commons is you've got the revise and the remix um, options so that you can adapt anything to the needs that you want. The only kicker is, and all of the English people know, you've just got to keep that attribution that this it has a Creative Commons license attributed by. And then the final R is redistribute. That's what's so important. Once you've made your awesome handout and you're, you've adapted it, Turn around, get your own Creative Commons license for it. Like Debbie said, it's two clicks. We'll show you how to do it. Um, and then share it with the world. And that you add it back to it to the Creative Commons um, database. And then you, anybody can search it. Anybody can find your stuff. And there it is. And that's the thing. I know sometimes we get stuff and we love it and it's gold and you're going to keep it close to your chest. But thankfully, we have such a great digital world and community of, of sharers. And so you, in return, share back the awesome creation that you've created. Um, if you want to read more about the 5R permissions, there's a link out to Lumen Learning that has a lot about a lot of information. Really quickly, we just took um, a um, a document from the web. I'm sorry, I'm I'm missing the screen. But we took a document from Creative Commons that was um, from Open Content. It was an uh, Open Educational Resources from Creative Commons. It was actually defining open content and open educational resources. And this is what it looks like, right? Oh, it's boring, boring <laughs> right? And so we turned around and took it and Blakely actually using Pictograph, picked a chart, picked a chart, picked a chart, revised it. And she took all of that information down there and she put her teacher magic on it as we do, made a picked a chart, same information. Um, she doesn't have to worry about citing any of the information. She doesn't have to worry about using any quotations because it's open resource. It's Creative Commons. And she made this awesome infographic that has the same information. The only thing is you have to keep this attribution down at the bottom. Easy peasy. It's hers. We turned around, did a Creative Commons license for it, and shared it with the world. Um, the final step is to redistribute. Once you're ready to redistribute your um, resource, and you simply go to creativecommons.org. Why doesn't everybody go to Creative Commons right now and just see what the website looks like? There's lots to do here. You can either click that link. That link takes you here. Um, if you want to go to this up here, you use and remix it. That's where you do the search. But here you do share your work. And then you choose the license that you want. I would say just keep the most broad License, unless you're really trying to start a business where you're going to make a lot of money off of teachers and creating resources and going and presenting. We should do that. I don't know why we don't all come up with a, a business plan and mm -hmm. go and share all of our stuff. But if you're, and if you're not going to do that, if you're just sharing it for teachers to use in the classroom, you probably want to choose the least restrictive license, which was that first one, that international license, and that allows people to do whatever they want. Pick your license, it takes two clicks, then you literally will have your work and you will have a Creative Commons uh, 
image. Did you did you have to copy paste likely that image? Yeah, so you can get it. It'll give you an HTML code. So if you're putting it on your website, you can embed the code and the image will show up there. And then this is what it looks like. Yeah. But this we, one here is because it's a, a it's a doc and not a website. You just you just copy and paste it. <coughs> Okay, and that's about the five R's. Be sure you redistribute and share. That's what's important to the teachers of the world. Um, and you can share via whatever platform you want. They give you lots of options here if you're a YouTube or a Vimeo or whatever you like, Flickr. All right, and I'll turn it over to Blakely if you're ready to search. Okay, so um, this first image is how to search for these resources, and they give you the example of using Creative Commons, which was the website. But there's a lot of websites that you can go to to look for these OER resources. So I'm going to go through some of those. Um, there's some videos that you can watch. But down here, I've chosen four websites that I personally went through myself to kind of test them out and see how easy it was and what the advantages and disadvantages were of using those. So the OER Commons. Dot org that is um, a very comprehensive site. There are a lot of materials out there that are not just for high school or not just for primary. They're all they're post secondary. So there's a ton of materials out there, a lot of information. Um, the only disadvantages is you really have to have time to search through it. Okay, so if you're looking for something quickly, that might not be the best thing. But if you're planning ahead, a unit that's a really good one to go into. And just make sure that you know what topic you are looking for, because you have to be pretty specific in order to get what you need. The second one, and this one I've actually used in my classroom a lot this year, is Common Lit. And that was developed by someone actually that went to New Braunfels High School. And she developed this open educational resource. This is really good for English and history classes, because it gives you readings with questions that are associated with them. And the readings are grouped thematically. You can search for readings that are going to be paired with your book. Um, it has YA fiction in there. So you know, part -time, or the Diary of a Part-Time Indian is in there. You can look for Romeo and Juliet classics are in there. And it'll give you readings such as poems, um, updated news articles, all that kind of stuff that you can put with that. The only disadvantage is you can't go in there and change the questions yourself. You'll have to like create a new document and adjust them. And just be careful because while it is an open educational resource, there are some restrictions with the copyright with the images and the text itself. So you need to make sure you cite those. The third one is open ed. Um, this one really closely matched OER Commons. It gave you a wide range. Except for this one is just going to be focused on kinder to secondary levels. It's not going to go beyond there. Um, this one I thought was really interesting also because you could search by TEKS. So it had the TEKS listed in there and you could search by, you know, I want to teach them about, you know, persuasive writing and you could click on the TEK and it would show you resources that go along with that. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, and again, like OER Commons, it's best if you have a really specific topic in mind or a specific TEK that you're wanting to teach when you're going in there searching. The last one, um, Heuricke has a lot of information, and it's great because so many of the sources are created by teachers, um, and it has the same lessons and activities. However, because there's so many personalized material, you really need to look through it, whereas some of the other ones have things from like PDFs that are a little bit more credible. So really make sure you look at the resource that you're going to be using since it was created by a person and not an organization. Um, what I want to do now is give you some time, since we've given you all the information, to kind of search for some things. So either with the person that you're sitting next to or by yourself, I'm using you a note card so that you can choose one of these sites and try to find your own advantage and disadvantage to using it, as well as think of one thing that maybe you could use in your classroom. For example, um, I know this year I used Creative Commons as the, uh, the common light, I'm sorry, as a station. And the kids could get, once they got to that station and their group, they would go through the common lit and pull up the theme, tragedy, and their group would pick one article to read together. So giving them that choice and including the technology, but they're still reading. 
So click on one of your four websites and search for a topic. And there are a couple of you in here. I know Dave and Nora teach dual credit. And, and if you teach any college courses, they're really interested in the open textbook. I know you guys have explored the open textbooks in your courses. Lots of universities are going to open textbooks. You two probably know more than I do, but there's a, a video, it's a YouTube video, about using open textbooks in your course. It's pretty lengthy, but maybe that will be useful to you. And if you guys want to look for open textbooks, feel free to do that. Have any feedback about any of the sites? Uh, if you're able to go on at least you know two or three of them, it, just, it would be helpful to everybody if you just gave some feedback about which you thought was easier to use and whether you thought the benefits and the, the disadvantages that you can see those. And then on the, when you pull one up on the right, it will have questions. And some of those do need to be adapted depending on the level of students that you're teaching. Oh, Um, I think those are reading guides and they know the difference. 
And I think they said they were going to be adding stuff, but this is really, that website's really good. Oh, like it. I like it. How did you know it was somebody from the Bumpers? It was in the videos and everything. Yeah, it was. I wonder what it's a common core. Probably the most videos. Which, there are ways to cross connect. And they're like much more updated than you're going to look at video. And then you're going to search. This common lit website also, if you are a campus where they're really pushing collaboration across um, across the core courses, this is a really good one to do that. Let's say you're doing a novel on um, Fahrenheit 451, you can click on that, find that in the uh, common lit, and then click on that, and it will have something that's non-fiction to compare with that might be science, might be social studies, but something that um, you can collaborate with across the curriculum. You see it's really new and they're adding You do open it on the Wikipedia. Open it in the so I'm sure throughout the year it'll be used up. What do you use? Me? Open a comment. I start with creative comments and then the other one. You're so open. So it's but it's that's why I have to have summer so that I can squirrel and I can get things done. So if I want to give you like some things, say, well, Common Lit is all about matching passages to novels. So, but if you want it, let's go back to our here. And let's go to just the OER comments and see what we can do. And are you talking about information about it or something for students that are See, the dead of the now we have the first stuff you're going to get is information about the right, right. as opposed to you can see what you find. Although it'll have, like here, it'll have teaching strategies. So that can give you some information on what would be. So let's say well, you're giving a free presentation free. to the teachers about <laughs> dyslexia. Right. You can use any of this stuff, and then you don't have to get any special permission so, for it. This is like you can use this like a presentation and not have to use special permission. I don't know if I can find the slides. They're pretty awesome. Yeah. 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 It's open. That is amazing. Okay. Super cool. Like little videos. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, please do. Here, look. I can see it. Ask somebody. Yeah. And look like I'm helping. So let's say you look at your teaching strategies. Mm -hmm. And. Okay. Uh, would anyone like to share one of the sites that they looked on and some advantages and disadvantages you saw or even something that maybe you would like to, how you could use it in your classroom? Yes. So I really like the common lit and wish I would have known about it before. Um, and I like how it paired things for novels, which is really cool. I think that the level of the read, um, when you click on ninth to tenth grade seems to be a little bit too advanced for some ninth to tenth graders. But 
that just allows you to then go to a different level, then I was thinking, well, what you could do is for the kids that are hired, you know, you can have them read different things, and um, then it would really give you the opportunity to differentiate, and then you could do one of the um, things where they pair and share or something like that, where they, you know, they meet their own reading level, but then at the same time, they're able to then share what they have learned, and then you can hear from lots of people about what the different things they read too, because you have so many different texts. So I really like that. Yeah, yeah, it's nice because it does give you those levels and the lexiles, and if you have, which we all do, have students in our class of all varying levels. Even if it's a pre-AP class, they're all over the place. It gives you some ability to allow them to read things that are on their level or a little bit above or vary in your class. Anyone else have something to share that they noticed about any of the sites? Or any questions you have? Questions? Um, they got it in 30 minutes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that was awesome. Any sharing? Tell us some cool things you found or something you liked. Or one site you thought was better than the other? Or one that you thought was worse than the other? I just asked Mindy about what she uses when she, when I keep Tupperware thin every year, and I'm like, oh, it's so hard, I want something new. But I just found this site that's got like lots of pictures, some primary sources, some essays, and then it even has links to other materials. So this is definitely something I'm gonna explore for the first time. Is that the open, you, you went with the OER Commons? Mm -hmm. Yeah, OER Commons. Yeah, it's nice because it seems like, you know, I've been teaching ninth grade for nine years, and it seems like Google always pulls up the same yes. exact things every single year. And then when I went on here and was searching for stuff, it actually had some new material that I could use. So like you said, to teach, you're teaching the same book, but use something a little bit more updated and fresh. And I know that Teachers Pay Teachers gets obviously a bad rap, but some, you know, if you've ever used Teachers Pay Teachers, sometimes there's stuff that you like, but then sometimes it's just kind of a I really have to say that you're going to find the same thing with the open educational resources. You're going to get stuff that's like, ho oh, hum, that's not smart enough for my kids, but at least it's free. You know, at least they're all of your resources, you know, skip through it. Keep in mind, you know, this is somebody else in another world. Um, with kids that are not geniuses like yours, and so find something else. Oh, my kids are the smartest. So right? <laughs> and remember, you have no limitations on what you can copy, what you can use in presentations. Um, if you're putting together um, some some kind of presentation about a novel or whatever it is that you're teaching, you don't have to worry about citations and all of that. You just have to let people know who created that. So it's just, a, it's just a lot quicker. Well, feel, feel free to stay as long as you want to search, but we're done talking and recording. We would really love your feedback. Um, if anybody wants to email us and just say, hey, I wish you would have done this, or we this was helpful, or whatever, um, email either Blakely or Debbie or myself and let us know what you guys think. And we so appreciate you guys coming you. on Thank your you. summer break. Yeah. Be sure you get some snacks. Thank you. Thank you guys. Stay as long as you want. Thank you. Perfection. <laughs>